the general public should be calling for as much privacy on our phones as possible because a huge portion of our lives are private and for good reason. My name is Freddy Martinez. I'm the executive director of the Lucy Parsons Labs. The Lucy Parsons Labs is a transparency nonprofit uh, that we founded about six years ago in Chicago. We primarily uh, focus on transparency and uh, in particular police transparency and uh, surveillance technologies and its role in society. My background is actually in systems engineering, um, a lot of Linux engineering, um, and then over the years I've sort of pivoted into a government transparency uh, activist. The history of surveillance has always been about control, um, going back to the foundation of surveillance in workplaces. I definitely do think that technology has accelerated its pace and made it more omnipresent in society. With the creation of smartphones, what we're actually seeing is extremely highly detailed information. Your social network, where you work, where you travel, photos of family, there might be intimate photos on your phone, basically your entire life fits in your pocket. An IMSI is called an International Mobile Subscriber Identifier. It's basically a phone number plus a few other unique numbers. That is a number that you use um, when you're talking to cell phone towers. An IMSI catcher, or they're commonly called stingrays, are devices that sort of trick your phone into giving up these unique identifiers. Um, so if you want to know a person's phone number, you set up this fake tower, you uh, say, I'm broadcasting at a huge power level, give me your unique identifiers. And that's, uh, you know, the very basic of how these things work. This can happen without um, any kind of uh, user input, without any kind of consent, without any kind of knowledge uh, on the person's behalf. The kind of data that can be collected first, everyone's phone number at a given spot at any time. That's problematic, you know, if you wanted to use this device at, let's say, a protest, you can identify everyone in the crowd. Secondly, you can create active location tracking. So if you have a person's phone number, you can track down exactly where they live, call records, if you place a phone call, how long it lasts, and also things like text messages. That's only the, you know, the capabilities that we've documented. Um, and as we're seeing, you know, 4G and LTE stingrays being rolled out, you know, those are even more tools that we, we actually don't know very much about. MC catchers are being used at embassies for counterintelligence, corporate espionage, you know, even a private detective. And then also law enforcement uses it uh, to track suspects. Um, sometimes without warrants. They're primarily the largest users currently in the U.S. We found uh, that there's a new model uh, of a Stingray upgraded for LTE. That software was being used by ICE. So this kind of melting of both, you know, highly xenophobic policies and also uh, quite advanced technology is quite troubling. I had heard a story about a uh, person who had gotten sort of tackled on the street of Chicago, had their phone snatched by the police, and they were facing uh, very serious felony charges. They claimed that the phone wasn't theirs, that they had bought it on the street. When the case went to trial, uh, the detectives swore up and down that they didn't use a stingray. Um, and the defense attorneys actually found it the case number in documents that had been released to us under uh, public records laws. Um, eventually, they moved to dismiss the case and that person was set free. That kind of story sort of highlights, you know, so many problems. These issues are very important and you just can't uh, make up the rules as you go along.
We were primarily focused with a protracted legal battle to, to reveal the records, to reveal its use um, in Chicago. Uh, that caused uh, Illinois to pass a warrant requirement law even before the Supreme Court did. Um, it's one of the strongest uh, warrant requirement laws in the country. And that wouldn't have been possible without, uh, you know, these long fights to bring transparency uh, to law enforcement's use. We are also helping lead a campaign to ban the use of facial recognition. We have long been documenting police surveillance. So we'll continue to do a lot of public records requests. For a lot of us in the labs, we think about surveillance as a mechanism of control. And we think that the only way to build a future around these technologies is to work toward abolition. We don't believe that police should be allowed to function in secret. Not a month goes by where we don't get, you know, requests from academics, from activists, from uh, people in the community, you know, to, to help them understand this, these technologies by empowering our communities with more knowledge. Uh, you know, it allows them to go and, and function. Um, you know, it allows people to go to protest and feel safe. It allows people to speak freely and it allows people um, to push for, for social change. You know, I am inspired by the fact that there's a couple dozen of us, um, a ragtag group of technologists who are taking on, you know, pretty powerful uh, institutions and we're winning.